transcend mere records. They become legendary stories etched into the fabric of human achievement. The 6th of May, 1954, Oxford University. Roger Bannister achieved what was once deemed impossible, breaking the four minute mile. Athletes had been trying to break this barrier for years. And they believed it was physically impossible to do. Scientists believed that the heart and the lungs physically were not capable to allow a person to break the four minute mile. Enter the man who would do the impossible. Imagine the scene. It's a cool English night in Oxford. The track is lined with eager fans. There are spectators and the air is thick with anticipation. With each stride, Bannister pushes his body to the limit, defying fatigue, defying doubt, and the naysayers that said it was not possible. With unwavering determination, he pressed on, his legs pumping, his lungs burning, and his heart fueled by an unyielding desire to conquer the unconquerable. And then in a moment that would echo, echo. <laughs> through the corridors of time, Bannister crossed the finish line. The impossible had become possible. The four minute barrier had been broken. But Bannister's triumph was not just for himself. It was a victory for every single person who dared to dream. All who refused to be bound by the limitations of the past. All who believe that with enough grit, determination and sheer willpower, anything is possible. Roger Bannister himself once said, the man who can drive himself further, once the effort gets painful, is the man who will win. Good evening, campus! The title of our final charge this evening is Run to the Dream. Run to the Dream. I love getting titles like this. They kind of have a two-part. I'm like, I can preach about running! Or I can preach about dreaming! But I decided to challenge myself and do both this evening. Yeah. About running to the dream. Since 1954, when Bannister broke the record, almost 2,000 other athletes have gone to complete it. Why so many? Because now they have an example. Now they believe it's possible. They'd never seen it before. But in 1954, Bannister did it. Many believe that Roger Bannister was the first person to achieve this, to break the four minute mile. But let's take a look a little bit earlier at an account in 1 Kings 18. Oh. Verse 45 through 40, 46, I'm gonna read the message version, the, the men shall go version as our dear brother Tomua says. Um, it's, it's story time this evening. I, I, I thought we got it. I got a message on my heart for you guys. So we're going to read the message version. But it's very easy to follow along in the NIV. Don't worry. I'll read from verse 45. It says, things happened fast. The sky grew black with wind-driven clouds. And then a huge cloud burst of rain. Sounds like Elijah was in Oxford as well. Yeah. With Ahab hightailing it in his chariot for Jezreel. And God strengthened Elijah mightily. Pulling up his robe and tying it around his waist, Elijah ran in front of Ahab's chariot until they reached Jezreel. A lot of people don't know this, but Bannister accredited many of his achievements to his Christian faith. Maybe Roger Bannister just read his Bible. Maybe he read 1 Kings 18 here and he thought, well, the distance Elijah ran was anywhere between 15 and 30 miles at full pace. And he somehow beat a horse and chariot. So it's believed that Elijah ran up to 35 miles an hour. Possibly even beating a two-minute mile. 
And Bannister may have just thought as the Christian he was, if Elijah can do it in two, I can do it in four. But Bannister had a dream, and he ran to that dream. Where there, were no, where there was no faith, there were no miracles. And where there is no vision, where there's no dreams, the people perish. These two are paralleled. You see, faith, it produces miracles. And when someone has already done something or something, they've seen it, it's happened. Our faith gets confirmed after the fact. When we remember the previous miracles, it helps us press on towards those of the future. Now, another story. This weekend, it was great to be preaching in Lisbon. And I, I, um, it was awesome. It was so good. But I felt very much like Bannister and Elijah (laughs) whilst I was there. It was great being there with the house church. We had a great service. And after the service, I decided to do a little bit of tourism. (laughs) It was my uh, (laughs) tourism. It was my, if you're going to have an ism, make it tourism, right? Um, But it was my first time in Portugal. So I wanted to get some souvenirs. I wanted to try some of the food. So I sat down in a restaurant with one of the disciples out there. Uh, And I checked Uber, and it said the quickest way to get to the airport, grab yourself an Uber. It's about two euros. Takes 15 minutes. Awesome. 15 minutes, two euros. I sat down in the restaurant after buying some souvenirs. I checked Uber again. Uber said three euros, 57 minutes. But my gate closes in an hour. So I ran towards to get the metro. I ran, I sprint to the metro. My flight leaves at 6.45. The gate itself closes at 6.25. I get on the train. I'm frantically looking for my passport in my bag. Even though I've got an hour on this train, I'm still, I'm looking for it the whole time. We arrive at the airport at 10 minutes past six. I have 15 minutes to get through security and to the gate and onto the plane. So like Elijah, I actually, I, it was a little bit different. I actually had to take my belt off because I went through security. Um, <laughs> So my belt in this hand and my, my, my which gate it is in the other hand and I run at full pace. And by God's grace, I made it through security and to the gate in less than 10 minutes. But why was I so sure that I could make it? Why did I have so much faith? Because I'd actually done it before. Two years ago, I'm flying from LA to Salt Lake City for a layover to Georgia, and then to Dublin, and then to Manchester for some reason, and then back to Birmingham. It was cheaper. It was like 400 pounds, it was cheaper, it was crazy. I could have walked. Um, But when I landed in Salt Lake City, you see we have the runway like this. You're supposed to land here and slow down. We landed here and didn't slow down. So we bounced off the tarmac and had to take back off. We had a false landing. I was listening to Never Would Have Made It by Marvin Sapp at the time. Um, it's crazy. I was, I, was, I was crying. Atheists were praying next to me. Uh, it, was, it was crazy. But we retook off. We retook off, and it meant that it added a lot of time to my flight. It added a lot of time to my, my, my flight. We had to circle all the way back. But it felt like the whole of Utah. We had to fly back and then kind of land back and land properly this time. This meant that I was left with 12 minutes to get from plane to plane. (laughs) And somehow I made it. I don't know how. By God's grace. I got to the gate for my flight to Georgia, and I didn't even have a boarding pass. (laughs) And they said, hey, we usually don't do this. We'll print it out here for you. And we'll print out your next one to Manchester and Dublin. I said, thank you. Cheers, cheers, guys. But, but, but I didn't have faith because of the two things that happened. I had faith beforehand. Because I believe in God and I read my Bible. But my faith has been confirmed by the miracle of being able to do it twice. 
But the dream for us is not a four minute mile or getting through an airport in 10 minutes. The dream for us is world evangelism. And the great news is it's been done before. Read Colossians, they've done it before. And people, even in the last 2000 years have gotten close. They've gotten close. But the question is, are we running towards that dream? Like our life depends on it. Because I realized if I miss my flight from Lisbon to London, the cheapest one is a thousand pounds. So I believed my life depended on it. (laughs) And in the same way, if we don't run towards our dreams, if we don't run towards the dream, if we don't run towards the miracles, if we don't run to our own dreams that we have, it costs us. But this week was so encouraging. We saw so many miracles. On Friday, Devo, Maureen asked Netche to be his girlfriend with a, with a, with a, with a five-point sermon. It was crazy. It was, I, I, he started saying the letters, and I was like, what is this spelling? Uh, I, I missed the third point. I was tripping. On Saturday, we saw a groom honoring and a bridal shower. On Sunday, I was able to be in Lisbon, four disciples, seven guests, all set up to study the Bible. And in London, I hear that we had two baptisms and a restoration. On Monday, we had the wedding of Tremaine and Amelia. On Tuesday, we had an EMC staff meeting. It felt like everyone from the European world sector was there. It's crazy. But this is the dream. God's kingdom being built here on earth. We've spoken about Roger Bannister, spoken about Elijah, spoken about myself. (laughs) And if I had more time, I would have spoken about Usain Bolt, Jonathan Edwards, world record triple jumper, Aries Merritt, Galina Chisjakova, Mo Farah, Johan Blake, people who hopped, skipped, and jumped (laughs) toward their dreams. But it looks like I'm about to get a tea sign. I already have. I didn't see it. So to close out, I want to share about my favorite athlete of all time. 300 meter hurdles in under 45 seconds. 12.78 meter triple jump. Awarded a full ride scholarship to Texas Christian University before transferring to and graduating from Houston Baptist University. Fluent in English, in Portuguese, and in Creole. Born and raised in Guinea-Bissau. Baptized July 28th, 2019. She is humble. She is funny. She is kind. She has miraculous faith. She is a great helper. She is my sister and my friend. Mana, Rosita, Irmazinha. Will you be my girlfriend?
Thank you.